Good afternoon and welcome to the regularly scheduled Arts, Entertainment, Parks, and Los Angeles River Committee. Uh, I am Chair Mitch O'Farrell, joined by my colleague David Rue, and I know that Curran Price uh, is en route, so we shall start the meeting. And uh, Mr. Rue, what I'd like to do is take multiple item comment cards first, and we have, uh, it looks like, one person for multiple comment cards, is that right? Yeah, yeah, general and then uh, comment cards on two, three, four, and six, nine, ten, uh, all of them. And that is Armando Herman. So Armando Herman, uh, you're on. Step forward and you have two minutes for comments on the agenda items and one minute for general public comment. Wow. wow. Apparently the kiosk is working this time, Mr. Walsh. HollywoodHighland.org. So as you see, folks, we're discussing why, <clears throat> why LA for Kids Steering Committee's report relative to program of Proposition K is not in our favor. Well, again, kids need to know what a Safe Street Act is. Well, let me remind you of the year 1968 when the United States government sued local municipalities like the city of Los Angeles will be sued eventually soon, along with the mayor and its elected officials for abusively using too much excessive force to people like you and I that are here speaking and exercising our First Amendment. And then in that 2017-2018 year 22, that sounds like year 22 minutes that Wakisha Wilson was hung in a, in a, in a jail cell while police had her in custody. That was just yesterday. And then I have item nine, bonehead and O'Farrell relative zero emission maintenance. Well, you know what? I like sleeping in my vehicle because there's no emissions when the ignition is off other than, sir, oh, you cannot sleep in that car. Oh, I'm sorry, but me and my bitch are trying to have sex while she's unconscious and it's not her fault. Well, sir, you need to move and get a hotel. Well, this is all I can afford. I've been homeless since 2008, and nobody wants to help me get off the fucking street under measure H, 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 bitch. And then, sir, well, uh, can you please uh, step out of the car? No, I got a short dick, and I don't want to leave my woman alone in the cold. And then you go into item 11. Officer report while determination of existing 55-year lease contract ineffective. Case 117 CV 00099 JKB for the record, United States District Court for the District of Los Angeles. Thank you. Did I get a minute, sir? You have your, you're on your minute for general, yeah. So you see, folks, this is what happens when you take on the fanatics like Wayne Spinner, the critic who was defending public interest, and then you, you indict them under fraudulent, so-called prejudiced, discriminatory actions like his public comment card. But now we have a kiosk. And in my kiosk point, I put 666. Because Los Angeles has become like Satan. Slanderous liars, maliciously prosecuting people under the TRO and the TMU. And now I'm here to MOU and have you understand that you don't fuck with people who follow the laws because it comes right back and bites you in the ass. 42 U.S.C. 1983, my First Amendment. Fuck you. We are joined by our colleague, Curran Price. Welcome, Mr. Price. Thank you, sir. And that was uh, our first speaker. And just for anyone who's in the audience today and is shocked by what you just heard, uh, the First Amendment gives you the right to act like a fool, um, to cuss because it gives you your jollies when you get to say a cuss word in public. It's very exciting for some people. And that's what we just witnessed, your First Amendment in action. Uh, so that brings us to our second speaker on multiple items, and that is Gina Rodriguez. Is there Gina Rodriguez? Please. Okay, so you're just here for one item. Um, okay, so... <clears throat> Uh, John Walsh is here. Mr. Walsh, are you here for multiple items as well? Yes. Please step forward. 
Uh, two minutes for the multiple items and uh, one minute for general. Okay, uh, let's get something straight. The reason he was able to talk like that is because of Federal Judge Fragerson. Who Are you on your items? Or oh, are you going to play games like that? I'm with just me? saying, you're, you're here for Ms. multiple items. Okay, Miss O'Farrell. Uh, uh, I'm uh, public comment. Uh, the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I've lived there since 1976. It's in terrible, terrible shape. Uh, zero emissions uh, parks, golf courses. Okay. I'm going to go right, right now into uh, my uh, general public comment. The judge, Pregerson, said he had a right in the Constitution. He didn't say anything about making a... F Did you read it? Did you read the goddamn uh, report that he... Uh, judge Pregerson, federal judge? He didn't say anything about... That's your opinion. That's your scumbag Mr. Chairman, opinion. Mr. Chairman, um comments, general public comments, should be confined to arts, parks, related matters. Uh, first you. of all, you're taking up my time. Second of all, this is what he brought the issue up, and I'm telling you right now that as far as we're concerned, we got the right to say anything, and Judge Pregerson gave us that right. And if you want to read it, fold it four as ways. As you were just reminded, as long as it sticks to an, something that is germane to the agenda, it is the agenda. It concerns the agenda and my rights in the agenda. You know, you are a total scumbag, Mr. O'Farrell. Thank you. You make me sick to my stomach. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, is Leticia Del Delgadillo, did you... She's with you and is here for the one item, not multiple items. Is that correct? Okay, so we'll, we'll take a look at that. And how about... Uh, Michael Rodriguez? Same. Okay, so those aren't multiple items. Those are one item only, and we're, we're aware of that. Okay, so that, that completes our multiple items and public comment uh, cards. Uh, and so, colleagues, what I'd like to do is uh, take items 1 through 8 and item 10. Let's pause for a second because we're being interrupted by Mr. Walsh and Mr. Herman. Okay, so... All right, so... You're both interrupting. All right, so that's your first warning. You'll get one more. Uh, one more interruption and you're out of here. All right, so that, uh, what I'd like to do, colleagues, is take items one through. Actually, Ms. Rodriguez and uh, Ms. Delgado and, and Mr. Rodriguez, what item are you here to speak on again? Which is item number 11? Okay, we're going to hear those anyway. All right, so that we're, we're good there. Got it. Thank you. So uh, without objection, we'll take items 1 through 8 and 10 on consent. All right. So, so we'll do that. Uh, and that brings us to uh, item number 9. If we could read number 9 into the record, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Item number 9 is motion of Farrell Coretz Bonin relative to the use of zero emission maintenance equipment at parks or golf courses in neighborhoods where improved air quality could be most beneficial. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, gentlemen. So please uh, identify yourselves for the record, and uh, please give your uh, uh, report on, uh, on what we have going here on zero emissions. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Uh, my name is Matthew Rudnick. Um, I'm with the Department of Recreation and Parks. I'm a chief management analyst, but I also serve as our chief sustainability officer with the department. Welcome. Good afternoon, uh, committee members. Javier Solis, superintendent of the Department of Recreation and Parks maintenance operations. So we're here today reporting on a motion in front of you that instructs the Department of Rec and Parks to report on a pilot program um, to implement the use of zero emission electric uh, maintenance equipment, grounds maintenance equipment. Um, we have various pieces of electric equipment throughout our um, park system that our maintenance uh, staff uses, um, but we do um, think that it's a, a great opportunity to advance that work. Um, there's a lot of new emerging battery technology that we can take advantage of. Um, so Javier is going to give a little bit of an overview. We, we plan to report back in writing in 30 days as the motion instructs, but we thought we could give you a little bit of a brief update on how we're thinking about proceeding with the pilot program. Terrific. Um, the other thing I would, I would just say is we did meet with the American Green Zone Alliance, which is a consulting firm and an accreditation 
uh, kind of um, a consulting firm that assists with greening grounds maintenance equipment, and they were the um, uh, partner in the city of South Pasadena's efforts to do kind of a green maintenance for the entire city. So we met with them, and they had a lot of great information for us a few months ago. And so we're going to um, likely, again, meet with them because there's a need to evaluate um, the equipment we do pick and deploy to parks. But I'll hand it over to Javier to talk about um, the purchase of some equipment and how we plan to deploy it um, in some of the areas of the city that are um, highest impacted by pollution. Terrific. And before you start, Mr. Silis, please hold it down, Mr. Walsh, because it's interrupting the meeting. Thank you. Mr. Solis. Yes. Thank you, Matt. So, uh, yes, uh, currently we are in the process of uh, procuring uh, electric mowers, line trimmers, and blowers from three different uh, manufacturers. We like to try out different pieces of equipment. I'm sorry, the same type of uh, equipment from three different uh, vendors so we can, uh, you know, see how they work and as far as durability. Um, this equipment will be deployed and rotated uh, around three different maintenance districts, preliminary, um, uh, we are looking at uh, piloting the equipment in Bull Heights, Wilmington, and Pacoima, which we know suffer from um, disproportionately high pollution burdens. Our maintenance staff will evaluate the equipment and, it is, uh, and its durability and explore uh, the charging equipment and battery needs of these units. After the equipment is evaluated, evaluated we will get our maintenance crews together to discuss the strength and weaknesses of these units. Um, we can explore larger implementation strategy with uh, American Green Zone Alliance on how best we, can, we may be able to scale up and replace gas power equipment. We will also be using some new green electric mowers at our, 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 at our golf courses, and we will report back to you as well on this matter. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I would just add, you know, it's, it doesn't really stop just with the light um, handheld equipment. We're looking at greening kind of all of our fleets. So from mm -hmm. sedans we run, we have quite a few trucks and heavy-duty equipment. There's a lot of new technology out. And with GSD and others, we're evaluating what's available to us so that we can really be a leader in, in greening some of our fleet mm -hmm. and um, reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. And I'm glad you mentioned golf courses, uh, too. So our golf courts, are they... Are there modern ones? Are they electric powered or are they gas powered? The modern ones? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, there's, there's um, uh, right now in the system, we have some diesel that we're, that we're replacing with electric uh, okay. mowers. So they're aging out. When do you think the, we'll have all diesel off of the grounds of? I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to, um, I don't have the information yeah. offhand, but I can, in we can report. include it in the report. Absolutely. Okay. Terrific. Terrific. And so uh, you've consulted with the city of Pasadena and you see that they're doing some innovative uh, Things with their equipment, and I think just to that respect, I think it should be note, you know, noticed. Like, City of Pasadena, South Pass, it, I think they have something like 19 parks citywide. We have yeah. 450. Yeah. So scaling up for us yeah. is a, a bigger lift, um, right. but we think there's a lot of opportunity uh, to, to pilot and see what works, and then right. deploy that in more areas of the city. And uh, when your report, can you include uh, any? Uh, the, the level of, of uh, maintenance that we contract out with as opposed to in-house, sure. uh, things like that are going to be helpful and like what those implications may or may not be. It may be a non-issue, but happy to. That'll, that'll help too. Um, I, I can tell you that as far yeah. as the mowing, mm -hmm. uh, none of that's contracted okay. out. It's, it's all, it's all done by, by city staff. Okay, great. And, and maybe even take a look at concessionaires. Absolutely. And what, what they might use since we enter into contract uh, agreements with them. And um, all right. And uh, so maybe you can't answer this either right now, but uh, the percentage of zero emission equipment that we currently have out and operating would be helpful too. Okay. Terrific. Colleagues, any uh, questions about this? Yeah, Mr. Price. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. All right. We're Mr. All right, so I'm going to recommend that we approve the motion and get this pilot started in Boyle Heights, Wilmington, and Pacoima, and uh, we look forward to hearing, uh, the re seeing the report, the written report. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. That'll, that'll be the action. All right, so uh, Mr. Morales will take items 11 and 12 together, uh, the El Pueblo Concessions Agreement, so uh, please read them into the record. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item number 11 is a CAO report relative to the termination of an existing 55-year lease and transferred to a 20 plus 20 year lease Overstreet Street Merchant Concession Agreement uh, between the city and Martha G. Delgadillo 
for space E4 on Alvarez Street for an initial term ending June 30th, 2031. And item number 12, there is a technical correction. It's also a CAO report relative to termination of an existing 55-year lease to be replaced by a 20 plus 20. This is for with Ms. Georgina Rodriguez for space C as in Charles for the, um, the um, CAO's report on file reflects that correct number. So the, the title on the agenda should also reflect that. Okay, and it's item 12. <clears throat> All right, thank you, sir. Uh, we have the CAO's office here to, to uh, give a brief presentation on, on this. Welcome. I understand this is your first report to yes, council committee. It is. Daniela Cuevas with the CAO. Daniela Cuevas. Thank you, yes. Ms. Cuevas. All right. So agenda items 11 and 12 are relative to the transfer and termination of existing 55-year leases into 20 plus 20-year Alvera Street Merchant concess Concession Agreements between the city. And the first merchant mentioned in item 11 is Martha G. Delgadillo. And the second is Georgina Rodriguez in item 12. Um, along with the request to terminate their existing leases, both merchants are requesting to add family members to their concession, which they will be able to do so under the 20 plus 20 um, year agreement. The current merchant leases are two of 14 existing 55 year leases. And as of right now, there are 59 merchants that operate under the 20 plus 20 year concession agreement. And eventually, um, a public hopes to get all merchants to operate under the 20, <clears throat> excuse me, 20 plus 20 year agreement because it not only allows um, for the addition of new family members like in this case, um, but it will standardize term length and the contractual terms and conditions. And it will also allow for equal rent increases and that corresponds with more revenue for the department. And that sums up the items. I'm happy, to, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have, and the department's here as well, just in case. Terrific. One quick question. Any idea on when you'll have all of these leases synced up uh, to fit within that uh, ideal 20-year? That I don't know. I okay. have to refer to it's, the department. That's something you're working on. <laughs> I do, I do yeah. believe Mr. they are Espinosa working on Espinosa is here. Thank you. Hi. Chris Espinosa, General Manager of El Pueblo Historical Monument. And thank you for the question. Well, um, this is our first foray into transferring these um, concession agreements over. And so we're really excited. If approved by the council, it sends a signal to the other merchants that there is a, a, a policy and a process to be able to transfer these individuals over. I, I haven't um, taken a very um, aggressive move with the merchants. I, right now it's, it's offered to them. I think once they see this move over, I'm going to get more mm -hmm. coming over to to a more standardized agreement. So we're excited to do this cleanup action after many years. It sounds like a great initial first step. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, the, the, these merchants here, they're getting ready for, a lot of merchants are getting ready for retirement. Mm -hmm. And um, so we wanna make sure to um, assist them in that, in that progress and that process. So um, I think you're gonna see additional uh, concessions coming your way. Yeah. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Espinosa. Mr. Rue. It's just a quick mm -hmm. question. Um, there's 59 contracts already have the 20 plus 20. How many merchants are there total? A approximately 75 merchants total. Um, some, you know, some merchants have more than one concession agreement. So when I say um, there's about 75 concession agreements, there might be maybe uh, 65 merchants total because some merchants control more than one concession. Okay. So there's only about 16 left who's not under 2020. Yeah, about, about 14, about 14 left. Terrific. Mr. Price. So the, uh, the uh, example we have here with Del, Gal Del Galgadillo, <clears throat> she went from 250, 275 up to 822? That's correct. That's a big, so there had many increases in years and years and years? or what, what was... Yeah, the, the concession agreement under that 55-year contract um, has some interesting provisions in there. Uh, one of them being that we are unable, the city is unable to increase the rent unless we build a multi-level parking structure at parking lot number two, which was contemplated uh, many decades ago. Um, in fact, there are a number of archeological resources under that space. And of course it takes a long time to plan and develop a major parking lot on that structure. So that of course never occurred. And so we're, we're, we're stunted with the very, very low rent. 
um, I've confirmed with the merchants that they are ready and willing to pay this higher rate and then follow the same practice as all the other 59 merchants, which is every five years we review the rent structure and then we make adjustments based on a, an appraisal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Terrific. Well, thank you. We have some of the speakers here. I think we'll hear from it. Uh, I think there may, might thank be merchants you. from Opo. Thank you so much, uh, um, Ms. Cuevas and Mr. Espinosa. Thank you. And so if uh, Gina Rodriguez and Leticia Delgadillo and Michael Rodriguez could step forward, you can all, well, two of you can take a seat, uh, and, and we'll hear from uh, Ms. Rodriguez and Ms. Delgadillo first. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good afternoon, Good everybody. afternoon. My name is Gina Rodriguez, mm -hmm. and I want to, first of all, thank Dove and Chris Espinoza for all the hard work that went into uh, finally being able to have the 2020. Mm -hmm. We've been trying to do this for over five years, I believe. So it took a long time, but we're here now. Our family started in 1928, so we're six oh, yeah. generations on Olvera Street. Wow. And with the other contracts, the 55-year contracts, we weren't allowed to add anybody. Mm -hmm. So now with this, it gives us opportunity to continue to pass on those shops to mm -hmm. our family. And uh, we're just very thankful, and we hope you approve the measure. That's wonderful. Congratulations for uh, 90 years of being there. Yes, yeah, That's long phenomenal. Time. Yeah. Six. Six. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. What a legacy you're leaving for your yeah. family. Yeah. Thank you. That's wonderful. Yeah, Thank they you. were one of the founders, so. Mm -hmm. It's terrific. It's such a historic place. It is. Do, do you sell food or mm -hmm. other items? Oh, no. It's, ours is clothing, mm -hmm. clothing. Mm -hmm. souvenirs. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Well, thank you. And, and uh, we have Leticia Delgadillo. Me. Ms. Delgadillo. Would you like to say? Well, no? I have a, a restaurant. They call it Mr. Churro. And can you speak into the microphone? We can just, you can just hold it over there if the cord is long enough. Yeah. Well, they said my name is Leticia Delgadillo. Mm -hmm. I'm here in, um, in 1957. I came to Olvera Street. Mm -hmm. I had 62 years in Olvera Street. He's my fifth generation, and I have one sixth generation. I'm very proud to be here in Dolbera Street. It's very nice. I Wonderful. like it. Well, thank you so much for coming in today. Okay, thank you. It's great to put a face mm -hmm. with the historic, you know, uh, El Pueblo you. and and, uh, and and celebrate that. Thank you. And meet you in person. So thanks for coming to City Hall. Oh, thank you. Okay, that's enough, Mr. Herman. <laughs> All right, and then we have uh, from uh, Michael Rodriguez. Mr. Yeah. Good. You, you, you second what they said? Uh, yes, yeah. Yes. Wonderful. All right. Just vote, just vote yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thanks for coming. Thank we you. really appreciate you, Thank you. you being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. So what we'll do is uh, we'll approve the CEO's recommendations for items 11 and 12 with the technical correction as stated by Mr. Morales specific to item 12. <clears throat> So we're good there. Yes. Without objection, that will be the order, which brings us to item number 13, Mr. Morales. Item number 13, Mr. Chair, is a verbal status update from the <coughs> Department of Recreation and Parks regarding mobile vending on Rex and Parks properties. All right. I know we have Mr. Mike Scholl, General Manager of Recreation and Parks, who's here. And I know we have, stepping forward, Mr. Joe Salisis. Um, and it looks like we don't have any additional comment cards on this item as the goats make their way out the door. Good afternoon. <clears throat> All right. Good afternoon. Mike Shaw, General Manager, um, joined by Joe Salisis, our superintendent of Griffith Park and oversees our ranger program. Mm -hmm. And um, if it's okay, I'll allow Joe to give our report, and I'm happy to answer any All questions. Right. Yeah. yeah. Good afternoon, committee members. Afternoon. Uh, so this is a verbal update on the mobile vending program that we were working on uh, back in 2016. We surveyed all of our recreation centers and looked at the size of the parks and what we believe is the appropriate number of food vendors for each park location. Uh, we also looked at our concessions agreements, uh, which vary throughout the city. Our concession groups covers agreements such as cafes, shops, rentals, food services, entertainment, and mobile food. The goal was to set up parameters for parks that had concession agreements. Those parks would have limited access for vendors. For instance, a permit in Griffith Park may be uh, for the park center area, but would not necessarily include the pony ride zone 
because we have an existing food and beverage contract at that location. Mm -hmm. We do have a permitting system for vendors in our parks through our concessions unit, and uh, we do this at our discretion. Uh, we also do recommend that vendors uh, offer a 40% uh, of all the food and beverage to meet LA Foods healthy uh, choice guidelines and favor vendors that provide healthy options. Mm -hmm. And we will continue how, how to favor those vendors. Additional points or something? Well, we, we, we hope that they would all qualify under the, we, we encourage it. I should, that's a better word, I would say. Encourage. So there's criteria that must be met for the, to, to have the healthy food. Um, we, we encourage the uh, mm -hmm. use of healthy foods. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, also, we will continue to work on this matter. This is a work in progress, but we want to be sure that RAP will continue to control the vending in the park system. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, good. I know it's just a verbal report. And so, colleagues, just a little bit of background, as, as you all are aware, uh, introduced this back in uh, December of 2015. Uh, and in concert with the way the direction the city is moving in establishing a, an ordinance uh, for citywide... Um, street vending. Um, we know that uh, we know that vending is happening in the parks as well, and and I've long felt that, especially with regard to parks, we need to get the issue under control f for starters, and then um, we can establish, I think, a, an ordinance specific to parks that will work for parks. Um, and uh, some of the criteria that was very important to me were the concessionaires. Right, who are paying um, for a facility usually, uh, and how important it is that we're not in violation of the contracts that we, they're very competitive for these concessionaires that operate in our parks. Uh, and so um, I'm happy to, to hear this verbal report, and um, there's going to be a direct relationship with how it's done in parks and how it's done everywhere else, where parks are governed under the city charter specifically. So uh, they have to be addressed um, similarly but separately because it's a completely separate animal, if you will, in relation to the proximity, the boundaries, and everything else. And the primary use of our parks is for recreation, passive, active recreation. Uh, and uh, so that has to all be taken into account so that we stay in, um, I think, uh, not out of violation of our city charter, as, as we've talked about in this committee. Um, and so um, I'm happy to hear even a minimal report uh, and happy to open up for, yeah. for questions. Mr. Price? Just a couple questions, Mr. Chairman. First of all, thank you for your leadership <clears throat> on this issue of vending uh, in the parks. It is uh, inextricably uh, combined with the sidewalk street vending um, uh, legislation that we're looking at and in fact I'm hopeful that we can get something to council within the next month okay. uh, and as you suggested uh, these two items really should be traveling together and so I'm hopeful that that we can merge them in a way that uh, uh, makes it easy to understand and is fair and you know protects the public uh, as we move forward so appreciate uh, appreciate your input Mr. Roof. Just a quick question. Yeah, I look forward to uh, um, uh, developing this and seeing this. But um, so when you say uh, vendors, does it mean, um, is it the traditional like a uh, hot dog vendor or does it also mean like an actual physical location? Like, a, a, like Trails Cafe, is that considered a vendor or is that considered something different? That, would, th that is a vendor. It okay. would be, they have a concessionaire agreement though with us um, typically anything that's stationary like that that has you know roots in the park was done through a concession where there was an RFP for a bid and you know the best proposal was selected that sort of thing so that that would fall under that category but vending generally is anything that's done in the park um, that's under a permit for a temporary basis or whether that's a Zumba class or a yoga class or food vending um, you know, there's lots of, we give out a lot of permits for a lot of variety of things that we would all call under a, quote, spender, you know, um, in a park. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, we would need to look at all that and work closely with uh, what's happening with the sidewalk vending and all that and try to be, you know, as consistent with all the rules as we can, which, um, and do as both council members, you know, stated. 
And Mr. Rudnick, who was just here, uh, mentioned there are roughly there are 450 parks, right? Or, right. Right. So, so with that, about how many of those parks have concessionaire agreements? Ooh, uh, <laughs> I, Ballpark is good. I'd probably say 10 to 15 percent. 10 to 15 percent. All right. Yeah. I mean, I. It, yeah, I mean permanent vending. I, I mean, we could figure it out. I, I don't think it's a huge number. Right. So, for example, the, we know in Echo Park Lake there are two contracts: one for the paddle boats and one right. for the restaurant. And right. So some of, so there's a lot of that. And, and examples of that. With our yeah, parks, it's, it's never one size fits it's, all, right? It's not with at trails, all. cafe, at Griffith, yeah. I mean, it's all. I mean, there's lots of parks like pocket parks, and we we have a uh, hundred parks that are less than an acre in size. Right. So. There's no concession. You know, there's just right. So some just, parks are in the middle of what you would might even call a food desert. So it would make sense to have some sort of arrangement wherein Absolutely. as long as, as the park isn't, uh, there's not an over proliferation of sales and service. We have to land per park on what makes sense. Right. right. So, uh, and then mix of services. I mean, there's dog training, there's yoga, there are pony rides, there are all sorts of things that happen in our parks that are completely unregulated. And so this will give us a chance to, to, to regulate uh, and bring some sense and a, a greater sense of safety, I think, to some of these things yeah. um, that, that get set up. Yes. And I think that when it, it, you come forward with um, you know, documents that we can look at and we're uh, heading toward an ordinance for parks, then uh, we can have all those categories. And, and there, I mean, there's a lot of work to do, and I, and I get yeah. that. Um, so what do you think... Uh, some of the biggest challenges that you'll face in getting this ordinance ready specific to parks? Well, I mean, it's, you know, we, we'd have to figure out how to, I mean, it's to make it the stream. Normally how a permit would work is somebody would, you know, they may go to a, into a rec center or into the regional office to pull a permit for a yoga class mm -hmm. or something. Um, we don't think we'd be able to do that with this type because there's other things that would need to be checked like do they have a BTRC do they have a um, are they licensed do they have a county health permit that's probably the biggest concern that we have is making sure because we can't be responsible for permitting something that doesn't that isn't licensed by the county health department right. so, so all food items that are sold yeah so that. we would have to figure out a way to centralize that so that the staff were trained to know you know it can't just be like uh, like a normal permit it has to, we're going to have to figure out how we would do that and i think it would be beneficial to the vendors as well to have a centralized location to where they know that they could go and get answers mm -hmm. so um i think that's kind of what we have to figure out and what we would be working with the city council on is how we would actually where we would do that and how we would do it maybe would, there's other maybe there's a few areas in the city that we would do that but. and we can also land on what types of merchandise are a, a better fit for parks as for example maybe we won't have a cd vendor right travel right. around yeah park selling cds or whatever right yeah. i mean we that's that's right i so mean there's, there's, there's nothing that would prevent us from like having an approved list of things that you can Offer for sales or service. That that's right. We uh, could work okay. with the uh, with the council on that for sure. Terrific. Yeah. All right, colleagues. So this is a verbal report, and uh, let's see. Um, okay. There was actually actually um, Angela prepared another really great question. Do you have a, a sense of the 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 temperature that some of our concessionaires have with this discussion? Or concerns or support, lack of support? Um, we, we, I don't think that we've had a lot of, I mean, just generally, we haven't had a lot of conversations, but generally it's always a bit of an issue when there's a vendor that's paying a fee to be somewhere, and then if there's somebody parked right outside of their door, it, that, that just creates right. conflict, and nobody right. wants that. Right. Um, but so I, I would... I think you'd find that as a general sense around the park system or so around be any a factor in coming yeah. up with an ordinance, uh, some sort of buffer zone that is. Yeah. 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 And it's, yeah. you know, like places like Echo Park where you have multiple things going on there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it may be a park that we just would not allow it to be in. I mean, it, that's mm -hmm. a discussion that we'd have to have with, right. you know, everybody about how we would do that. I mean, mm -hmm. it does, it's not, I don't think there's a guarantee that you would get a permit in a right. park. Depends on the size of the park, what the vendor is already doing and whether or not that, distance can be achieved and you know all those factors mm -hmm. terrific yes so, but so as a rule we wait for a, a prospective vendor to come to, uh, to approach the city 
approach parks and recs about a, a site? It's not that we have a every four years we send out an RFP for no. all the concessions that we have. No, just we would just they would come in and apply <clears throat> for a permit. Okay. We wouldn't. I, I don't think we 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 we, we don't foresee doing an actual you know agreement with each one but mm -hmm. just okay. basically issuing them a permit to be you know and to do what they, they could show a ranger or a police officer it's like I you know mm -hmm. we're allowed to be here all I mean right. that's that's how we do all of our permits so that's that's how I would see we doing it here mm -hmm. terrific all right well we look forward to scheduling the written and we'll be in dialogue uh, with you on that uh, and as mr. price mentioned I think it'll be good to have the two uh, proceed on a, a dual track because one will inform the other uh, and uh, so mm -hmm. looking forward to this thank you yeah. thank you very thank much. you thank you so yeah. much thank you. all right with that mr. Mills I think that completes all the agenda items so since there are no further agenda items this meeting is adjourned thank you so much